Now let's actually talk about dealers, dealers in, in securities. I'm just going to have a hypothetical dealer. This is not what their balance sheet really looks like, but let's start here because we'll connect it to the, the it connects to the supermarket idea here. A dealer that is making a two-sided market in a security, a particular stock, a particular bond. When we say it makes a two-sided market, we mean they're willing to trade the security for money and they're willing to trade money for the security. They're willing to go either way. Now we just learned from the West Side Market that the secret is inventories. So if you want to be a dealer, a two-sided dealer, you need two inventories. You need inventories of cash and you need inventories of securities. So you might think of a dealer as having a balance sheet like this. They have a certain wealth, a certain capital, and they just allocate it as between cash and securities. And they allow the quantity of those inventories to fluctuate depending on supply and demand. Okay, that's a sort of building intuition about how dealers work. So if you think about this, this dealer over time, if their capital is sort of fixed there, okay, you can think of their inventory fluctuating like this, where this is the amount of cash and this is the amount of securities. You know? So what I'm, I'm showing here is here, this line, this isn't price here, this is your inventories. This is your, this balance sheet here. Um, as people are selling this dealer securities, okay, that is depleting their cash holding. So they had this much cash, now they have this much cash. So they're buying securities and depleting their cash holding. And then here it goes the other way around. Okay, they're selling securities and increasing their cash holding. And so they're absorbing the fluctuation in, in demand on their balance sheet. They're absorbing it in their inventories, moving that inventory around. And in principle, if they had a large enough inventory, the price wouldn't move at all. The, the price could be completely constant, okay, and the, but the demand flow is moving around. We're going to have to relax that because that becomes important. But, but elite, here you can just see the inventory stuff pure and simple. Imagine life without a dealer like this. There's fluctuating demand for these securities. Okay? What that means is that if, the, the, if somebody wants to buy securities, they have to find somebody to sell them securities. Either they have to beat the woodwork and find them by raising the price they offer. Okay, say, I really want to buy this security, so I know that, that it's only worth 10, but I'll pay 12. Okay. Or they just have to wait until they see somebody who wants to sell. So without the dealers, we got this problem of time waiting for demanders have to wait for suppliers or suppliers have to wait for demanders depending on where the imbalance is or we have price okay that you have to use price in order to bring supply to you or to or to bring demand to you so the price is going to so so dealers are smoothers right they're smoothers I, sh I said if they have enough inventories here they could conceivably just make the price flat okay that's a lot of smoothing okay not only do they make the can they make the price flat but they make the, the waiting time before you do a deal into infinitesimal. Like, because you don't have to find somebody on the other side of the trade. The dealer is standing ready to be on the other side of the trade all the time. You don't have to wait. You can just buy. So compare the securities market to the housing market. If you try to buy a house, there's no dealer. Okay? You gotta, you gotta go and you gotta hunt for a house. And a broker takes you around, and you look at all these houses, and then you decide that you maybe wait. So there's a lot of time issue there. Okay. Um, if you want to buy a house and the, and the person doesn't want to sell, you might walk, knock on their door and say, I like your house. And, and, and the guy says, well, really? How much are you willing to pay? You know? And so th if you say that, you know what's going to happen. You're going to overpay because you're, you're trying to push somebody out of a house that's not ready to move out of a house. Similarly, on the sell side, if you try to sell a house, you know, you might wait for a long time, okay? And, and, and if you really need to sell quickly, you might have to lower your price. So you can see that in a broker market, 
you have both these time problem and this price problem. In a dealer market, there's this smoothing. Dealers aren't doing this you know, to do you favors. They're doing it to make money. So we need to think about the economics of the dealer function. But I'm trying to uh, create some intuition here about why this is kind of magical. You know, it's, and, and, and it's, it's a, it, 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 it is a, it, a market microstructure piece that is missing from our microeconomics textbooks, where it's just supply crossing demand and there's a price. And we don't ask, is that a continuous price? Is that a discontinuous price? What would be the inconvenience in, if we were having dis, illiquid markets instead of liquid markets? Typically, we assume in microeconomics and in general equilibrium too, we assume perfect liquidity, that if you want to buy something, you can, you can buy it. Okay? There's, a, there's a market clearing price all the time. Um, there's an assumption of perfect liquidity. We're going to come back and see why this assumption, in a certain sense, just has to be false. It, it has to be false. Because dealers are, are supplying market liquidity, and they're not doing it for free. Okay? If liquidity was free, so that there was, there was an infinite quantity of it, it was a free good, dealers wouldn't provide it. So the abstraction we have in price theory is an abstraction that's logically impossible for, for liquid markets.